for at least two projects from the coroner's office that hadn't made it into the capital plan and that did show up in the budget. The question was raised um, in the email exchange, which I can forward to you. I have your copy on that. Was this uh, um, mentioned by the coroner, uh, uh, Scott Brim? Yes. Was this for a vehicle? A vehicle, and there, there were two items. A vehicle, and I can't remember now. Uh, but I don't have it available today. So, again, this is a court before the horse, maybe. But I can certainly have an amendment and present an amendment uh, to this board uh, for that, that vehicle purchase. I believe it's $35,000. I think that's for the I don't, I, the answer I think is under. It was they, below seven. I, I am not even familiar with that piece of equipment. I never even heard of that one. Okay, so let's, let's work this out outside of this meeting then. Okay. At, at least we have some movement on that. Well, we will. We, I'll, I'll have to uh, talk to fiscal about the correct procedure for that forward. My preference would be an amendment to the capital plan. And, and uh, if you want to work with our clerk, he has the correspondence. For the shortened version of that meeting, do you have any information to consider with respect to that proposal? So, Mr. Sienoff, or Attorney Sienoff, and Ms. McCall. August 8th and August 22nd meetings. Are there any questions or concerns in regards to the minutes? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. Motion by Commissioner Doherty. Second. Second by Commissioner Holt. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. At this time, I'd like to give anyone an opportunity to address the board on the non-agenda item. If you give us your name and where you're from when you address us. Hello, hello. Hi, my name is um, Julie Thomas. Thank you for the opportunity to speak before you. I'm a resident of Allentown. And as representatives of Lehigh, various Lehigh Valley organizations, including Power Lehigh Valley, the NAACP, and the Lehigh Conference of Churches, we're here to make a case for doing away with cash bail for nonviolent and low risk offenders as has Northampton County, Philadelphia, as well as other counties, cities, and states. Lehigh County has the opportunity to look critically at our criminal justice system and implement changes to make the system fairer for poor and minority citizens, while at the same time, reduce our jail population and save tax dollars. You may have seen stories in the Morning Call and other media this summer about the inequities of court fines, fees, and cash bail, and better alternatives that are starting to replace cash bail. Our intent is to start a conversation and put on the record what we hope is the beginning of a process to eliminate cash bail. Briefly, cash bail is a system of pretrial release that forces a person who has been accused but not yet found guilty of a crime to pay, pay a fee to be released from custody prior to proceeding, additional proceedings or trial. While it is often characterized as a way to enhance public safety and, and ensure prompt regular appearances in court, in fact, cash bail does neither of these things. Instead, it distinguishes among people by their ability to pay. In fact, other types of pretrial release such as unsecured bonds and robust pretrial services have been proven to be more effective and better at improving, improving public safety. A 2016 study found that people accused of crimes and detained prior to trial have a six to nine percent higher likelihood of recidivating compared to those who are not detained, especially among low and moderate risk people. Detaining such individuals for as little as two days increases their chances of committing new crimes. These findings are not surprising, given that pretrial detention increases an accused person's financial strain. Even though I know, we know, that Lehigh County Pretrial Services has a valid risk assessment tool and robust pretrial services, services programming, the system still allows for many people who can't afford bail to end up in jail. In short, cash bail poses a three-part problem. It unjustly puts people into prison because they're poor. 
it increases costs to taxpayers, and it's being challenged in many courts as unconstitutional. Thank you very much. Thanks for us. The, the same uh, reservations as many of you have stated. And uh, often I have to agree with what most of you said. Even though I am a died in the wool Republican, and uh, I am supposed to be tough on crime and everything, but I also look at this as it's costing us a lot of money in the county jail. So if you're a fiscal conservative, you have to believe that the bail system that we have right now is improper. It discriminates against poor people. Uh, my political advisor, my wife, has <laughs> been you know, one side and down the other about this for much longer than I've been hearing it here from you people. So uh, I am a firm believer. So uh, maybe it's because of my Quaker background, but uh, I agree with you, and I promise that when the president judge comes before the uh, committee for uh, uh, the budget, that this will be one of the questions that I'll be asking the president judge. And I'm glad you said that, uh, that you would like to work with the county executive, the judges, and with the commissioners in finding some uh, uh, way to uh, address the situation. It is a system that is broken. It should be fixed. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Doctor. In accordance with the request for proposals number 18-47. Thank you. Somebody like to make that motion? Somebody. Motion by Commissioner Bray, second by Commissioner Holt. Any commissioner comments on the motion? Any public input? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the motion, please say aye. Aye. aye.